Today I'm going to go over every feature, upgrade, accessory, and modification we chose to make our Ford F450 the perfect tow vehicle for our full-time RV living setup. This video will be a bit longer because I want to cover the entire truck, top to bottom, inside and out, but I will be adding chapter markers to the description, so feel free to skip ahead if you need to. So let's go ahead and get started with the factory specs. This is a 2022 Ford F450. We chose the 4x4 crew cab configuration in a gate black, with a black onyx interior. The 450 also includes an eight foot bed by default, which I absolutely love because that means you can take the truck and the RV at a full 90 degree angle when hitched up and you're not gonna hit the nose of the RV on the cab of the truck. It has the 6.7 power stroke diesel paired with a 10 speed automatic transmission and a 4.3 rear end gear ratio. With the 4x4 setup, we also chose the FX4 off-road package, which includes skid plates underneath and controlled hill descent. We also chose the 40 console 40 leather seats instead of the bench seat that goes all the way across. And then we opted to fully load the Lariat trim on our 2022 instead of going for the Platinum trim, which is what we had on our 2019. We did this because it was the only way to get black paint instead of chrome on the door handles, window ledges, mirrors, tow hooks, and the tailgate. The Platinum trim looked nice on our 2019, but we've always been a fan of all black vehicles, so this actually fits our style a lot better. To get back up to the platinum level of comfort, we added on a few options individually, which included adaptive steering, which adjusts steering sensitivity based on your current speed, power running boards, which automatically retract and deploy when opening and closing the doors, panoramic power moonroof, which offers a full view of the sky even from the back seat, adaptive cruise control, which automatically adjusts speed based on vehicles in front of you. And yes, it does work when towing and that is absolutely awesome. Ultimate 360 degree trailer tow camera, which gives a bird's eye view of the truck. Then we also added the Lariat Ultimate package, which includes LED lighting in the bed of the truck, remote start, a tailgate step, driver memory seat settings, and heated and cooled front seats. Other options we chose to add on were quad beam LED headlamps, which are much brighter and wider than the standard yellow halogen lights, snow plow prep and camper package, which upgrades the alternator and maxes out the load capacity of the front and rear axles, rain sensing windshield wipers that automatically turn on and adjust speed based on weather, rapid heat supplemental heater system, which is an actual heating element in the ductwork, so you can get hot air before the engine even has a chance to warm up. Engine block heater, because you never know when you'll get stuck in sub freezing temperatures, rubber all weather floor mats, upfitter switches, which allow you to easily wire in different accessories and control them all from here. Garage door opener, because why not? Front plastic wheel well liners, which look better and are also much easier to clean than the standard ones. The Lariat trim also comes standard with a lot of tech features like power seats, windows, a cellular modem, blind spot and collision monitoring, navigation, a premium sound system, Apple CarPlay, dual zone climate control, things like that. It also has an integrated electronic trailer brake controller that you can use to adjust the braking power of your trailer. And we did choose the spray in bed liner, but while our truck was being built, Ford was unable to install it because of supply chain issues. So they removed that from the window sticker and our invoice. So we simply have one applied at a Line X installer once we took delivery of the truck, and it looks and performs just as good as the one we had on our 2019. So all of these features are pretty much exactly the same as they were on our 2019, but there are a few minor differences. First are the awesome model year upgrades. The most noticeable is this much bigger and sharper 12 inch glass display that's just as crisp as an iPhone screen. The old one had an eight inch display, which had a lower resolution image and was a bit softer to the touch. And with that extra size, you now have the ability to run two windows at a time. So for example, you can have Apple CarPlay up while you're also keeping a live view of the bed, or you can keep this side on Google Maps while also seeing the music controls over here, et cetera. And CarPlay is also now wireless, so I don't even have to plug in my phone anymore. I can hop in, crank up, and Apple CarPlay seamlessly starts with no hiccups which is probably my favorite upgrade. It also has a wireless charge pad in here, so if I need some juice, I can just lay my phone there and it'll start charging. We also now have a 10 gear transmission versus the six gear in the 2019. So that gives us a lot more torque in the lower gears, but I've also found that it increased our fuel economy from around 16 miles per gallon on the highway all the way up to 20 miles per gallon, which I think is pretty insane for a 10,000 pound dually. It also took our towing from around 7.5 miles per gallon all the way up to nine, which might not sound like a lot, but on a full travel day, that can save us around $25 in diesel. We also have a few different driving modes now, including an eco mode, which we didn't have before. Not sure how much that helps, but I use it anyway when we're not towing and just driving around town. 
It also came with this Pro Trailer Backup Assist, which I haven't had a chance to try out yet because you have to install some equipment on the trailer before it'll work, and I just haven't gotten around to that. But apparently it lets you back and steer your trailer using this knob instead of the steering wheel. Then we have those small differences in appearance, including the black handles, ledges, mirrors, tow hooks, and the tailgate. The front grille has been updated, which I think looks pretty nice. And even though we also had the upgraded LED headlights on the 2019, these are much nicer and look really awesome in the dark. The edges are outlined with a really aggressive bar of light, which the 2019 didn't have. So since we fully loaded the Lariat trim from top to bottom, the only things that we're missing out on compared to the Platinum trim level would be rear heated seats, which we never used in the 2019, and then front massaging seats, which were really just a gimmick on the original truck. I was super excited about those at first, but you could set them to the highest massage intensity level and you would barely feel anything coming through the seat, so I wasn't too bummed out about losing those either. And that's about it for the features and upgrades from the factory. Next up, let's go over the accessories and modifications we added ourselves. You can find links to all these add-ons at aroundthesunwego.com, but I'll also list them in the description below. The first add-on was the fifth wheel hitch so we could hook up with our RV's pin box. Back in 2019, we ordered the Ford OEM version of this hitch, which was a Reese Elite rated for 27.5 thousand pounds, which was plenty for our 20,000 pound RV. To mount this hitch, you'll need the Ford fifth wheel hitch prep pre-installed on your truck bed, which comes standard on all F450s, but it's also an add-on option for the other models. You simply drop the four feet down into the holes, rotate to secure, and that's it. We've used this hitch for almost four years now in both the 2019 and the 2022, and it's worked perfectly. We also added a low profile to no bed cover so we could utilize the entire eight foot bed as additional covered storage space anytime we might need it. It also protects the hitch from the weather when we're not using it and slightly improves our around town miles per gallon. I did a lot of research before picking out this bed cover specifically because not only did I need one with an extra low profile so we wouldn't lose any clearance between the truck rails and the bottom of the fifth wheel, but I also wanted it to be a soft roll-up style for a few reasons. One, roll-up style covers don't block the view out of your rear window like fold-up covers do when they're opened, which is important for us on travel days. And two, soft style covers take up much less space behind the cab when rolled up versus the mechanical retractable style covers, which was an important factor for us because of the next thing we wanted to add, which was a combination toolbox slash fuel tank. This is our fuel box, and it's an absolute game changer when it comes to refilling the two 30-gallon gas tanks on our RV, which feed our generator when we're dry camping out in the middle of nowhere. We started out with six five-gallon jugs, but realized pretty quickly that wasn't gonna work for us. The very first night we spent dry camping in 90 degree Tennessee weather, we tried manually refilling with the cans in the dark and it was a nightmare. I didn't realize this beforehand, but five gallons takes a really long time to dump from a jug, not to mention six jugs. So after about 30 minutes of constant spilling, mosquito bites and arm fatigue, we finally got almost 30 gallons into the tanks. But with this thing, we can now pump 30 gallons in two minutes and it holds 57 gallons total. So with all of our fuel tanks filled, we can run our generator for up to 200 hours before we have to head out on a fuel run. Next up was a tire pressure monitoring system or TPMS, which allows us to monitor the pressure and temperature of all of our tires on the truck and the RV in real time and immediately alerts us if there's ever an issue. Considering we're moving 30,000 pounds at 65 miles per hour down the highway, a blowout can not only be dangerous to us and everyone around us, but it can also cause some serious damage to our equipment. So being able to monitor in real time for any temperature spikes or losses in pressure allows us to quickly pull over and take care of any issues before we have an explosion. For the past four years, we've used the TST 507 system and it's worked great for us. We have six flow through sensors on the RV, which allows us to add air without removing the sensor. And then we have six cap sensors on the truck, because the flow throughs don't fit in between the dually rims. Another safety item we wanted was a rear camera for the RV so we can monitor what was behind the 43 foot trailer. We've used the Furion Vision S wireless RV camera system for the past four years and it's been fantastic. It runs continuously when we're driving so I can use it when I'm making lane changes and just to stay aware of everything around me. I can also use it when backing up. I used to have the monitor mounted to the windshield with the included suction cup, but I recently discovered I could keep it here in the sunglasses holder, which gives me more visibility out of the windshield and allows me to quickly secure it out of the way when I'm not using it. It's totally wireless other than the power cord for the display, which I just ran through the ceiling and side pillars so there are no visible cords. Another very useful tool for us is our Rand McNally RV specific GPS navigation unit. We have the weight, length, and height of our RV saved into the system, and it automatically avoids any routes that we won't fit on. 
This includes weight restricted bridges, tunnels, and any low overpasses. I have it mounted above the dash here with this included magnetic charger so we can run it in tandem with Google Maps, giving us two layers of information. We usually set the McNally to the final destination and then use Google Maps for keeping tabs on real-time traffic info and navigating to fuel stations and any other stops in between. I also have this cord routed behind the dash, so hooking up and charging is completely wireless. The final safety slash security item we added was this dual facing dash cam. Not only does it record the interior and exterior of the vehicle during driving, but it also detects and records any motion inside and out while parked, providing an additional layer of security monitoring. As you can imagine, it does take a bit longer to stop when you're hauling a 20,000 pound RV. And if somebody ever decided to cut us off because they wanted a paycheck, this might help us provide some proof that we were paying attention and not the ones at fault. Plus, it also helps us effortlessly document our travels and capture all of those split second moments that you never want to forget. See, that's the chance you take. Oh. I just saw his legs. He's revving up. I'm like, I'm right there. I don't understand. Oh my God. Well, he just hit a f***ing power line. Then we needed to carry our bikes with us on travel days, but considering the garage of the RV is full with the car and adding a bike carrier to the rear of the RV would block the ramp door, I decided our best option was to add a hitch receiver to the front of the truck and carry them there. I leave them uncovered so the airflow isn't restricted and with both of them facing in this direction, it leaves a gap at the bottom that allows the radar to function as normal so we still have full use of our adaptive cruise control. We also had Tent Wizard in Jacksonville, North Carolina install a clear heat rejecting ceramic tent on the windshield and then darker tent on the side and rear windows, all of which block 78% of the sun's infrared heat and 99% of all UV rays, keeping the interior cool, comfortable, and safe. We also had Tent Wizard wrap our chrome bumpers in a protective black film and then perfectly polish and correct any paint imperfections before they covered the entire truck with a five year ceramic coating. Over the years, we've tried tons of different waxes, protectants, and coatings on our black vehicles. And so far, a professionally applied and cured ceramic coating has been the best thing yet. Almost nothing sticks to it and water simply beads right off. So when things get dirty, we can simply spray the truck off with plain water, wipe it dry with an edgeless microfiber towel and a little Chemical Guys Hydra Speed Ceramic Detailer, and it leaves a mirror finish every time. 